Hello, Paul Case here. I want to give you all a little update on my hay field. We had this uh, hay field. We didn't get this cut off until uh, the third week of July. And I kind of thought, we was getting some rain. I kind of thought I might get to bale it again. I actually went and got some nitrogen and put another 100, uh, 120 pounds of nitrogen on it for the acre. And it's gotten lots of water. Came back really good. Tell how deep the grass is. Some of this is prairie grass. And the part, there's kind of a square here. You can almost see it where the changes colors right over to there and then back this way. Uh, but all the rest of it's been sprigged to Bermuda grass years ago. to get to bale it again but that gummit it keeps raining and we ain't got enough dry to be able to do any good from bale anything so uh, actually I thought it was gonna cut it first to last week and I come in here and drove down the fence and across the middle you probably can't see it on the video but across the middle it's kind of a dish pan and it drains into a pond over yonder so all of that out in there sometimes gets uh, pretty wet and over there by that tree right there and from there just about down to that pond is kind of a low spot and I got over there and drove in it and I think I could have got over the rest of it we just had to leave a streak in the middle of it but you got to get across that somewhere to get to the other side and then we only would have had three dry days to have gotten that mowed down it out and bailed up and and here it is uh, middle or first first part of october and it just probably would not have worked so we didn't cut it code is going to get to pasture this but we'll really come up here to check on see how we're getting along with this I sold this hay first cutting hay to uh the guy that buys from me every year a friend of mine and he's kind of slow about getting around here to get it but he's in a, coming in here trying to get it I loaded him a load yesterday right here, but by the time I got him loaded, we was making ruts. And you can see what he's had to do right there. So, I believe he's, he's a, not half done. A little over a third done. There's three rows of that right there. That's all about even. So, he got one whole row and maybe a load off the next row. But I seen he's already hauling this morning, so he may haul all day today, which would be good. Now that little blue stem comes in here pretty good and it's got a little Johnson grass in a few places but, uh, we've been trying to get the cows turned into it pasture that down right away and uh, I have some ground like this over on the other side section where I had my uh, weaned steer calves this year and it made that sage grass you can tell all that down in the middle there got some little tufts of sage grass it's not real thick but I kind of wanted to get rid of that in that other field and I've always heard that sage grass is a telltale sign that your pH is wrong. And so we we got a soil sample and sent it off. And when it come back, it said it didn't need any lime. We were actually uh, better than I thought. Bermuda grass will grow really good up to about uh, five, eight pH and higher. And our pH was six, four on that ground over there. So. Yes, I'm thinking it's waterlogged. I don't know. It may be too tight. Uh, I know that Bermuda grass likes the ground to be good and loose and have plenty of nutrients in it. In the last few years, a couple years anyway, we have really had a lot of water wet, and that part up there is kind of boggy and it holds water really good. So almost like a dish pan. So I'm going to try running a, if it dries out enough, I can drive over it. I'm gonna run a rotary hoe in there. I may put some weights on it. I may not have to, I don't know. Try to get it to where it goes down the ground some. Anyway, that's Paul Case. I'll catch up to you on the next video. On to the next one.